my beautiful kings and queens. Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Black Actors Studio. I'm your host, Danny Royce. And today, joining with me is I have a very special guest. He's been in the game for quite a while. You know him from Losing Isaiah as Isaiah. But also, you see him in Spider-Man 2, The Haunted Mansion, Notorious, Brown Sugar, Power, The Cosby Show. Man, he's been all around, like I said. Please, the Black Actors Studio is very proud to have Mark John Jeffries. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. Can't complain. And good, yourself? good. It's great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate um, it. Thanks for having me. I love the backdrop. Got the skyline going on there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> New York, you said, right? Yeah, New York. Born and raised, man. I, I live in Queens, so this is okay. actually like... The city over there, Empire State, all that good stuff. Nice, yeah. I was going to say, that looks familiar. The Queens, love it. Well, first, I want to say congratulations uh, to your new film, Fellows High, uh, starring Amari Hardwick and Alan Alvinado and uh, Elise Neal. So Yo. I want to, uh, to I want you to tell us a little bit about the story and how your character plays a part in it. Okay, yeah. Uh, so it's actually kind of based off slash pulled from real stories uh, from the director, writer, and producer, uh, Kevin Nelson. Shout out to Kev. And uh, yeah, the storyline is pretty much like, uh, 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 I'm trying to figure out how to tell it without giving too much away. Okay, so it's about <laughs> a, a group of dudes that are in high school from Philadelphia, and um, they actually go to Fells High and, uh, a couple of unsaid events lead to an incident happening inside of the school where there's a shooting and um, they tell everybody to vacate the school and they are held up inside with the police outside and they're trying to figure out how to get out of the situation and it inevitably leads to a very interesting situation developing. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's one of those stories where the characters create the movie uh, the story is the story, you know, so uh, things that a lot of people will be able to relate to growing up, not having an outlet, not having a way out, that one friend that is the one that seems like he has the most promise, you know, the other friend that right. doesn't seem like anything, there is anything out there for him per se, uh, supportive friends that are all wanting and supporting and showing love to that one friend that has the biggest opportunity to make it big um and then life just happens you know so my character his name is melvin and i am a sickly individual who has i guess you could say lost his will to live mm -hmm. uh and the rest you kind of you just you gotta you don't have to see it man it's, it's yeah. a dope <laughs> storyline amari plays the principal uh the principal of the school and he's actually the father of uh, the main character that's played by Oscar O'Neill, Jermaine O'Neill, and um, uh, Jarrell O'Neill, my fault. And uh, yeah, Amari's his pops, and Elise Neal is actually his mom, but Amari and Elise are separated in the movie, and Elise is actually a sergeant in the local precinct. Um, yeah, man, we got a dope cast. We got TJ Adams from Wu-Tang, shout out to TJ. Yes, and sir. he plays uh, Beef in the movie. So it's a, it's a goodie. Nice. That's what's up. Yeah. Uh, Alan was actually on the show uh, last season. Uh, he's he's a he's a fun guy. He's a fun guy to be. <laughs> oh, Alan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Alan. Alan actually plays the main character's older brother and yeah. Omari's son. So, yeah. Nice. Shout nice. out to Al too. There you go. Not an hour everywhere. Uh, so yep. in the uh, in the show in the studio, we like to start off at the beginning. Okay. So you were born in New York. Uh, Born and raised in New York to the court. To the court. And uh, where, Queens exactly? or Nah, I'm from the Bronx. The Bronx, okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. The Bronx, <laughs> baby. <laughs> yeah. I ain't no Queens, dude. No, no, sir. I'm about to say, I'm like, okay. All right. <laughs> and so how was, the, how was the family dynamics growing up um, in your household? Uh, were you, the, do you have any siblings? Yeah, I have two siblings, a sister and a brother. My sister actually was... Both of them used to act. Uh, my sister was the voice of Uniqua on Backyardigans. 
Nice. She, she actually won an Emmy. It's crazy. I've done more work and she the one with the award. So that's, <laughs> but um, her and I actually did work together. She was in the Haunted Mansion. She played young Elizabeth, but that part was edited out of the movie. Uh, okay. And we did like Wendy's commercials together, Oldsmobile. When I started People PC, she, the first ad, she played my little sister in the ad. And my <laughs> nice. brother was, is in the industry too. He did a lot of commercials. Uh, yeah. And I'm, I'm kind of one that had a passion for it once I got right. older. Right. You carried on to it. So I, I, I had, you know, I've had quite a few child actors here on, on the show and it's always interesting to get their perspectives and like, it's kind of how they got started into the industry um, and the relationships with their parents and managers and whatnot. So I want to just dive into that a little bit um, about how you got started and um, your first big role and how it proceeded after that. Oh, uh so actually my father gave me my start. My dad was a photographer and he was on the uh, American Express campaign. And I had just come home from the hospital. The baby that they had lined up for the campaign got sick and wasn't able to shoot. And the ad was showing how easy it was to swipe your American Express card at the ATM. So it was a print ad of just a mother holding her child at the ATM with her American Express card. And once that baby got sick, my father's partner on the shoot was like, your son just came home. He's a baby. Use him. And <laughs> they used me in the shoot. And then uh, I got with Ford Modeling Agency after that and modeled pretty much until I was like nine, 10. But my first commercial, I was two years old and it was a Canon camera Zoom X joint. And when I was three, I booked Booz and Isaiah and the rest is history. Right, right. So, yep. and I, I'm a firm believer is everything happens for a reason. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and that's a crazy story how, you know, the kid got sick and then you were just, you just like, I'm ready, I'm here. So, let's <laughs> show up. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So, then, so then you book Losing Isaiah, right? Um, mm -hmm. And I can admit, I know from my personal experience, um, you know, Isaiah did get on my nerves quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I want to choke him. I was also very young Good. and I didn't understand. Yeah, I know you did your job very well. But I also was very young and I didn't understand the aspect of drugs and the effects on a baby and all that stuff. So obviously now I look at it totally different. But mm -hmm. at that time, how was that audition for you? Uh, man, I wish I remember from my own memory. I can only reiterate things that I was told. Right. I, I know that I had to audition a total of nine times. Mm. Uh, after the second time, they said they knew I was Isaiah. They just could not believe that I was capable of, I guess, doing what I was doing. You know, right. uh, I did about five or six auditions from home when my dad filmed me. And then they flew me out to California, I believe, to meet with, to read for the director or the producers in person. And then uh, I read with Hallie. They flew me out again. I read with Hallie. And they flew me out one last time. And then that was that. Started shooting. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. And so then after losing Isaiah, moving forward, you know, you start getting more roles. And I'll say congratulations again, because, like, you know, people, especially young actors doing that uh, consistently <laughs> can be troubling. But you, you killed it. Um, Appreciate it. And Appreciate it. Of course. And I'm sure that opened up a lot of doors and a lot of different opportunities came after that. Um, what was what was your like you felt your big next big major role was? Um, and Ooh. tell us how that was on set for you. My next big, my next major role after that, I it's hard to say because when when you're in that when, when you're still growing, your idea of what major is is completely different, you know? So mm -hmm. after losing Isaiah, I went on to do New York Undercover. I went, out to, I went on to do uh, NYPD Blue. I went on to do Third Watch. I went on to do uh, Law and Order before my next movie. And at that time, all of those things were relatively big. I was also right. a spokesperson for People PC. I did a, over 11, 11 spots for them. And that was all before my next huge, you know, big movie, which was probably 
Story Little 2 was my next big, yeah. big movie after that. Now, I had done other projects like Brown Sugar. Uh, I had done a uh, hair story with Latanya Richardson Jackson, Sam's wife. Um, man, honestly, I, I did a lot in between, you know, right. but when you're at that point, man, every, every win you have, every role you book feels like it's a huge thing. So, right. and I, but I now looking back, my next big one was definitely Story Little 2. Okay. Yeah, yeah I love how you said. Um, I love how you say. You know, major role. It it, it it does. It does. Description of major. Really, you look at it differently depending on where you are mm -hmm. in your career. Uh, yep. What do you say to some of the young actors out there who, uh, you know, felt like they're working, but they felt like they haven't made that big major win, uh, as opposed to the perspective of what they have. Uh, what's something that you say to them? It's a it's a process. Uh, one of the things about life in general is that you have to do good work and work hard regardless of the reward. You know, right. a lot of people, they want to work hard because they feel like the reward is right there. No, nah, the thing that brings the reward is consistent hard work, is, is knowing, it's knowing what you want, but also taking pride in the quality or the value you put out. Because if you leave it up to somebody else giving you a role to validate how good you are or, or or to validate what you deserve, you may never get it, you know? So you just have to take pride in doing your best and putting out your best and your time will always come. This is a marathon. It's, it's, I'm, I'm gonna say to y'all what Will said to us on Saturday, the brother we love. This is not a sprint, it's a marathon, you know? Yeah. And sprinters are short-minded because the goal is right there. And if you, you're, you're sprinting and you feel like the race is over and then you realize, wait, nah, there's a, there's a whole nother market that's set out there for you. And, and the whole concept of it is anything that you do is just another step along the, your, your overall process. If I book Star Wars tomorrow, great, I book Star Wars, but I'm only 30 years old. So the race ends for me? No, it continues. Right. So you can't let those wins feel like something huge, but you also can't let the failures feel like something huge, right? You saying both. I'm pretty sure he hasn't won every single race in his life. Mm -hmm. He had to work to that point. Yeah, he may have been the slowest dude in his, in, you know, on his track team at one point. I don't know his upbringing for sure, but losing or failure is part of winning. It's those yeah. things that make you, that prepare you for winning. You know, LeBron, he's won what three, four rings now, but he's also lost about three or four. And then out of that, he's been in the league for, what, 18 seasons? And how many seasons has he not made it to the NBA Finals? But yet, he is arguably one of the best players to ever play the, the, the sport. So you always have to be mindful of, regardless of what's happening right now, I'm taking pride in my work, I'm taking pride in my craft, and what's going to be is going to be. I like that. That is First amazing. Thing. I say, drop the mic, interview's over now. <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, that was great. That was great. Um, did you did you have any nicknames growing up? <laughs> nah, none, none whatsoever. Nah, so my family nickname is Boogie. All right, I'm gonna say this to y'all watching right now. If you see me on the street, do not call me Boogie. <laughs> All right, don't call me Boogie. That okay, was my family that. nickname because I used to dance to everything. Like the toilet oh. would flush, I was dancing. Growing up in the Bronx. You get the dudes that, that ride by in like the Honda CRVs or the little tricked out joints and yeah. they playing bachata, merengue, and I would just start dancing. So right. my nickname <laughs> when I was growing up was Boogie. Um, as I got a little older, Eddie Murphy actually gave me the nickname, which is really just acronyms, MJ. Uh, and then okay. friends called me MJ, some friends called me Hands. Uh, yeah. Hands? Yeah, Hands. Why? Yeah, because uh, I had hands. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I go fight. So, hands. We're going to take that a few different ways. But <laughs> yeah, it, it was like, it was the friends that rarely ever got to see me escalate. They were the ones that called me hands. Got you. Okay. So, and it started like, yo, chill, Mark Small, but he got hands on him. Right. I got you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's up. Um, yo. So, what was that? <laughs> Yeah, it was okay. Uh, what was your um, some uh, a TV show or a film that really inspired you? 
Oh, that's tough. Um, so I'm gonna be I'm gonna be completely honest. Growing up, I was not a student of the art. I was too busy making films to appreciate them. Mm. And it was something that was so natural for me because I started so young that the things that most people do and did in order to, I guess, have a better understanding or, or to, to come to more of appreciation, I didn't go through that process. So like, I did not really have inspiration that drove me to act that came from the art itself until I got older, to be 100% honest. Like, you know, certain people were watching movies with Eddie Murphy. I was at Eddie Murphy's house. It's, he took me in, he became my mentor. He came to my comedy shows. He critiqued my writing, helped critique my acting. You know, um, people were watching Tracy Morgan. I was on a show with him, hearing mm -hmm. about stories about him and Martin and, and things like that. You know, certain people, actors that certain people looked up to and, and watched their work to take away from what they did were sitting in front of me telling me what I needed to do and, and helping me make corrections. So I, I, I would say that my inspiration came from more of a firsthand source than film itself. Mm -hmm. um, it, it came from the people that was actually, it didn't come from the screen, it came from the people that was on the screen, mm -hmm. but in person, you know? So, uh, and then when I got a little older, I I started reading like theater and stuff like that. You know, I had done Broadway when I was younger, but once I got older, I started reading some plays and watching some theater work and I started reading Shakespeare and things like that. And that wasn't, it didn't necessarily inspire me, but it gave me a better understanding of certain things. It, right. it, it rounded out my train of thought, but I would say once I really, really, really started enjoying watching people work. One of my favorite movies was The Count of Monte Cristo, mm. starring Diesel and Guy Pierce. Uh, I like Traitor with uh, Don Cheadle. Don Cheadle, uh, yeah. And then I started liking things like Leonardo, Blood Diamond. Uh, always like Denzel, great, great performer, clean work. Um, man, shows, I, I never really like took the shows that much until I got older. I'm actually an anime dude. Like that's yeah. that's that's nice. my thing. Shout out to my <laughs> little brother, Nano Fusion Neo Gaming. If y'all trying to look him up, uh, I yeah, love but, I love anime too. Anime is dope. <laughs> anime is, is is fire, bro. But uh, <laughs> but now I, I have a I have an appreciation for stories. Right. I, I feel like certain work is made because of you know acting. The industry is to make money. And then others, you can watch a project and tell that they had a tie to the story, that they had a message, you know? So that's that's really what I flock to now. But I'm a sci-fi dude. I'm everything Marvel, everything DC, yeah. everything Aliens. Like, that's that's my genre right there. And I like comedy. The comedy, of course. Yeah. yeah for sure. Yeah, but, but honestly, my inspiration, man, is just that my my abilities my art it's a blessing and i want to pursue that and, and and reach my fullest potential and since i have a saying that the sky can never be the limit i continue to like seek to reach new heights like literally when i booked power my friends were going crazy yo you want power you gonna be on power that's one of the hottest shows on tv blah blah blah, blah. we should celebrate and I was like, I was around like 20 of them. And I, I looked at all of them and I was like, power is a great show. And this is for everybody listening. I am thankful for everything that I do. But it's just, this is something that I tell myself that helps motivate me. Because once you start basking in your accomplishments, you start right. settling, you start getting comfortable. And comfortable mm -hmm. people stop looking to grow, you know? Right. So um, I looked at my friends and I was like, yeah, I, I book power. But there's another dude that just booked Star Wars. Uh. <laughs> you know, so like, I'm right. thankful, I'm grateful, but there's a lot more out there for me. And I cannot allow myself to enjoy this moment too much because that's how you get complacent. Exactly. And, and the thing that kills growth is comfortability. Comfortable, yeah. Yeah. You're going to be uncomfortable to grow. 
Uh, I, yep. I love that. Um, so I want to talk about who have you worked with um, that really left that impression on you? You know, we all we work with a lot of different people, but there's always there's a couple different you know experiences that really just like wow. So who was something like that? Um, someone like that you worked with? Uh, okay. First, I'm gonna say like I'm the type of person that I always I always look for the lesson to learn from mm -hmm. who I work with. You know, certain people just because a person doesn't necessarily try to teach you things. I'm one of those people where I can learn so much just from being in your company, you know, right. just from watching. Uh, so with that being said, I would say the top of my list is Eddie Murphy. Lasting impact, changed my life, changed my career, changed my outlook. Meaning to and not meaning to. Like Eddie told me a lot, taught me a lot. And then there were so many lessons that I learned just from being around him. Yeah. Um, Tracy Morgan, learned a lot from that man. Uh, Bill Cosby actually told my dad certain things because I was on the Cosby show when I was younger. Right. He told my dad certain things that impacted my career greatly also. Um, so even though it wasn't me, I still benefited. Uh, the director, Rob Minkoff, worked mm -hmm. on Story Little 2 with him. And while we were shooting Story Little 2, he had me come in and read for Haunted Mansion before the role even hit like the breakdown and cast me as Michael. I was one of the first people attached to that movie. So uh, Rob, I learned a lot from Rob. Uh, hmm, dad, man, the list goes on. Yeah. Uh, if, if, uh, if Eddie Murphy, one thing that Eddie Murphy did to you um, that left that everlasting present, what would you say that would be? <laughs> uh, so one thing I'm gonna say about Mr. Murphy is that he is, a very, very, very nice, humble person. But he tell it like it is. <laughs> and one day I was in like, I was at his crib and I was in like the Black Hall of Fame of acting, man. Will Smith was in there, uh, Chris Rock, uh, the Wayne's brothers, Keenan mm -hmm. and Damon, uh, yeah. Paul Mooney, oh, Rick man. James before Rick passed away. Uh, Dad, who else? Uh, 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 uh. It, it was, yo, everybody was in the crib, right? I'm like, that's a, that's a heavy hit, heavy hit. Yeah, right there. Like, and this was regular. Yeah. Like, this was Sugar Ray Leonard. This was the norm. Martin, and two days after that, I got an audition for Homie the Clown. And Keenan was directing it. So I went to... Eddie and I was like, Mr. Murphy, Mr. Murphy, I got an audition for Homie the Clown. You know, Keenan was just here. I know that's one of your friends. Can you put in a word for me? Like, let him know that I'm auditioning, tell him to look out for me. And he was like, what? What you say to me? And it was the first time that I ever, that Eddie ever got like aggressive with me per se. He was like, what you say to me? And I was like, I have an audition. And Keenan was just at your house. Like, can you let him know I'm coming in an audition and put in a word for me? He said, no, MF, I'm not doing that. And I was like, why not? He said, how did you get here? You audition, right? How you booked the Haunted Mansion? You audition. Anybody put in a word for you? Anybody looked out for you? No, you went in the room and you proved that you was the right man for the part. How did you get any of your work? You went in and you worked for it, right? So what do I look like letting you do all of that work, get to this point to now just hand you things? Mm. Mark, MJ, I'm gonna tell you something. Anything that a person gives you is never yours because you didn't earn it. They could take it away. But anything that you rightfully work for, that you earn, is yours to keep. Nobody can take that from you. Wow. Now get the F out of my face and go upstairs <laughs> and play with my eyes. <laughs> and that lesson always stuck with me, man. Like it always yeah. stuck, it always stuck with me just because it's like. It's true. It's if so somebody true. Thinks something, how do you how do you how do you sleep with that? You know, like how how wow. can you take pride in things that are given to you when there's other people out there earning it? Right. And then yeah. what happens when that person is no longer there to give? It's the it's the give a man, teach a man thing. You know, mm -hmm. you give a man a fish, he eats right now. You could give a man a fish 30 days and he'll eat for the whole month, but 
let that day come when you're not there to feed him. What happens? Right. He either has to rely on somebody else or he starves. But if you teach a man, to show him once and he's set for life. You know, so once you learn how to, and once you work on how to impress and how to book and how to make people see and know that you are the person for this role, can't nobody take that from you. Hey Amen. Yeah, dope. and that's the point. Um, well, who's someone you haven't worked with that you really would like to? When we go down the list? <laughs> like give, give us your like top, top three. Top three? Okay. Uh, I'm gonna do filmmaker and then I'm gonna do actor. Okay. All right. Uh, top three actors, Denzel. That's, that's number one. Uh-huh. Uh, the things that I, yeah. I'm gonna just say that. <laughs> it's Denzel. Uh, you gotta say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just say that. Like, Denzel is a person that is if influential beyond belief, man. Just right. his presence um, and what he's done for the industry. I would, I would love to be able to share the screen with him. For sure. Um, my second might be shocking to some people. Tom Hardy. Oh, okay. Tom Hardy is one of the best actors out there to me. Like I, I appreciate his work and I have watched him for so long and I have watched him in certain movies and did not know it was him. Mm. Like I watched The Revenant, I watched the whole movie dog. And I'm like, <laughs> that scene where him and Leo was scrapping and I'm like, who uh, yeah. <laughs> My man look wild familiar. <laughs> Yo, that's Tom Hardy? <laughs> yeah, that was, I was, that was like, incredible. Yo, that is no way this is Tom Hardy. So he's definitely one of them. Um, the third, oh, that's a tough one. Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, mm, I honestly don't know. It's it's oh. a it's a couple, it's a couple. Uh Tommy Lee Jones, Anthony Hopkins. Yeah, uh, I want to work with Halle again. I would love to work with Samuel Jackson. Samuel Jackson, that's it right there, Sam. Samuel, Sam, okay, Sam. yeah. I, I need to work with Sam again, man. Sam is, uh, Sam is the man. I definitely need to work with Sam again. Uh, yeah, uh, filmmakers. About the filmmakers, yeah. George Lucas. Need to be in Star Wars. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, uh. uh Kevin Faye, Marvel, okay. I definitely, like that's, right now that's the top of my list. I definitely, I need, not one, I need to work on a Marvel film and I need to be in a Star Wars universe. I go. can't be a stormtrooper, you know, I'm too short. Like, yeah. outfit not gonna fit. <laughs> but I could be a Jedi, you know, I, I, I could be a Jedi, so. Uh, come on. Definitely won't work Y'all need another so. brother on there anyway, come on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, don't, John, John can't have all the fame. <laughs> John can't be, he can't be the only one. Ed, right. I, I got y'all, you know? <laughs> um, nah, but I definitely would like to work with, with Kevin Faye. Uh, let me see. Oh man, there's so many great directors too. Uh, F. Gary Gray. Uh, I wanted to work with John Singleton before he passed. Yeah. Uh, Rick for you may. Uh, 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 what's the dude's name? I I actually just got a chance to work with Benny Boone. Uh, Benny Boone okay. is actually a great director because he he just has a different perspective on so much, and I think it's because he started doing music videos, but now that he's doing like shows and he's crossed over, he did Honey. Um, right. I worked with him on City on the Hill. He was the director of the episodes that I was in for season two. And that was dope. Um, man, but there's so many like, uh, yeah, there's so many dope directors that I would love to work with. Yeah, I know um, it's hard to, I know it's hard to do in the hard, Yeah, Ava DuVernay. <laughs> um, yeah, Ava DuVernay, I would love to be in the Shonda Rhimes project. Yeah. Man, that's, you ain't right, man. You gonna ask me that question, <laughs> didn't give me three? Like, <laughs> Well, we got we got some extra, you got some extra credit in there. So um, I wanna get into um, your role, because I mean, you've had, you know, very, a lot of roles in your illustrious career um, thus far. What was one of the 
challenge, most challenging roles and characters you have to step into? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, man. I haven't been challenged yet. Oh, I haven't been challenged yet. I'm challenged man. I'm waiting for that. Like I want that. I need that. I I need a character that makes me uncomfortable. You know, like I I I need that. Um. Just my whole philosophy as a performer, I don't, the first thing I do is become comfortable. You know, like that's step one. So right. every character that I've, I've, I've gotten, all I do is I just find, I try to find that person in my real life, or I try to find that person or a person that has these traits or that this, this breakdown reminds me of, I try to find the real life equivalent of that. And if right. I can't, I go and I search for it, right? Like if I don't know anybody personally, I'll go and I'll look for it. I'll go to areas where I feel like I'll see that kind of person. Um, I've even done creepy stuff, bro. I follow people. Like I found people that I feel like represent the character or the traits that I'm looking for. And I follow them mm. while they're walking around shopping and walking in the city. You know, I watch them eat. I, I'm a creep on the low, you know, but that's what it takes to bring real. You you draw realness from realness. So that since that's what I do, I haven't really been challenged because I'm an emulator, but I know, but I pull and then I emulate in my own right. Right. Um, yeah. So, you know, become, becoming comfortable is step number one, but I, I need that. I need that person that just like, I'm like, oh, snap. <laughs> okay. I, oh. You know, I, I definitely, I, I want that. Well, all, all the filmmakers who are listening right now, <laughs> <they're welcome. laughs> this man needs uh, 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 talent. So. <laughs> bring it this way, baby. Bring it this way. <laughs> uh, Joe, uh, you know, as you've grown in your career and throughout Hollywood, what are some of the things that you've noticed has changed um, people of color? and front of the camera and behind the camera. What are some of the things that you notice? Uh, I'll say one of the biggest things is just opportunity. There are a lot more people of color in film, both in front and behind. There are a lot more actors that come from different backgrounds and ethnicities and nationalities that right. are now like, pillars in the industry. So I would say that's one of the biggest changes that I've seen and that I, I like and I appreciate and welcome. Um, black filmmakers, man, uh, Spanish filmmakers, uh, Asian, you know, like even, yeah. even white filmmakers that want to tell stories or include different ethnicities in stories, you know? Right. Um, I feel like that's grown tremendously. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for it, I'm thankful for it, I welcome it, and I hope it continues. Uh, there are a lot of great filmmakers that have come from different backgrounds that really champion breaking barriers and making sure that different stories and different perspectives are seen and heard. Right. And that's one of the biggest things. And I, and I really, I feel like one of the things that helps that are all of these different media outlets you know, Amazon Prime and, and Netflix and Hulu and, and Showtime streaming right. and HBO Max and yeah. all of these different networks um, own that just, you need content. Yeah. And every story can't be the same thing. So then you get these filmmakers that have great stories and great content and things that people want to hear. And now when these networks come up and they're bold enough to tell these stories, then now you have full slates of, of, of projects that are just things that wouldn't have been on TV 15, 10 years ago, Ten you years, know? Yeah. So um, it, it's, it's beautiful. It, it's a beautiful thing. And as a, as a, a black male actor, do you, do you feel how important is it to you to tell our stories correctly and to bring light to a lot of uh, different issues and, and things going on? Oh, it's very important. Because people don't know unless you tell them. People don't know your experience or, or the way that 
not the way that you see the world, but the world sees you unless they ever, if, unless they ever get a chance to walk in your shoes or they get a chance to see a day in the life. And a lot of people don't. Um, a lot of people, you can't even blame them for their ignorance because your world is only as big as the bubble you allow yourself to live in. So if you don't, if you don't have access, right, or you're not around those kind of people that live a different reality, you literally have no way of knowing. And if the narrative that's all that you always taken in is the same thing, then after a while you feel like that's all that this person or people are capable of, or that's what their reality is. When that's not that's not the truth at all. You know, so certain people are ignorant by choice, but other people are ignorant just because of circumstance. So you got to give a person a chance to step outside of their ignorance. And that's what I feel our stories do. Yes, that is. I like that. I like the way you put that. Um, what's on right now that you uh, that you're binging? Yeah, you're gonna, you and, know. Sure, I got a list. Um, <laughs> Looping on Netflix. I'm loving that joint. Okay. I'm waiting for season two. Uh, Project Power. Shout out to Henry Juice and Ariel Schumann and the whole the whole squad. They were the directors of Nerve and um, cool. they did Project Power with Jamie. Dope story. Love the storytelling yeah. in that. Um, uh, 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 show wise, let's see. I am watching WandaVision. I'm watching. Uh, 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 dang, what's the name of that joint that I just got finished? Man. Uh, on Netflix. <laughs> On no, the wilds on Amazon. Oh, okay. Um, uh, 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 dead. Join with Brian Cranston. I like it. It's about New Orleans. Your Honor. Um, um, I have been watching uh, uh, Showtime joint. Man, uh, I watch a lot. <laughs> yeah, I've been like, see, I've been working recently, so right. like my brain is like kaput, but. Dad, the joint that what's their name is on? Uh, about Chicago. About that Jason Mitchell was on, and oh man, uh, <laughs> I'm blanking. Uh, uh, too. Lena Waif is the writer. She's the showrunner on it. Common. Oh, um, well, you're not talking about the shot. Uh, the shot, yeah, the shot. Yeah, I was gonna shy. say you talking about the shot, right? That's yeah, the shot. I was watching the shot before <laughs> okay. before I got busy. Um, uh, 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 uh Insecure's dope. Insecure, yeah. Yeah, insecure is dope. Um, what else, man? That's huh. See, that's when I start, like when I'm working on a project, I don't really watch other shows just right. because I feel like you're influenced by the people that you watch the most. Um, so once I start working on a project, I just stick to sports and anime. So <laughs> I've been like sports and anime mode since like October, November. Uh Okay. But recently, like I'm coming out of that shell. Yeah, man. But there are a lot of great Amari's working on a new project uh for Netflix that's shooting in um Australia right now. So I'm curious to see that. Man. Uh well, I'm about to start Bridgerton. A lot of my friends have been telling me about Bridgerton. Bridgerton. Yeah, yeah. yeah Shonda, I was, Shonda. Uh what else? I was watching Money Heist on Netflix. That you know what? Yeah, I've been going. I've been going a little back. You know, back in the day. Yeah. I've been, I finished the whole series of Smart Guy. You know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. Man. You know, just stuff like that. That's funny. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, so. What's I'm behind um, sometimes, but I always catch up. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's so much. There's so much to catch up on. Um, I want to uh, get into uh, your. How do you prepare for a role? Um, there's a lot. I mean, there are so many ways. And so many techniques actors use, but what do you find works for you? Uh, I would I, I would say like I kind of have my own technique, but I'm a mixture of method and Meisner with my own philosophy sprinkled in. Because mm -hmm. the first thing I do when I pick up a script or I'm preparing for a role is I find the real. I find I find the realness in the character itself by looking for how I identify it in real life and how that person actually looks. And, and I kind of build that. So let's say the character is uh, a aggressive, but, or no, let's say that he's laid back, friendly, funny, but sensitive, right? I'll find a person that has 
some of those traits, right? So what is it about a person that makes them seem like that? What is it about a person that makes them sensitive? What is it about a person that, you know, uh, makes them seem whatever the other trait it was that I said? And once I find what that is, then I go, okay, well, how do I embody that? What does that look like on me? And then okay. I'll I'll kind of wear that, right? Like I'll, I'll, I'll literally put those traits on. Sometimes I do one at a time just to isolate them and, and, and really like draw them out fully and get comfortable with the trait itself. And then I'll say, okay, let me overplay it, make it big. And then I slowly naturalize it. And then I'll do that for each trait or I'll do that for all of the traits at once. And once I get to a point of naturalization, then I start like, looking at the skits the scene itself i don't make choices inside of the scene i allow myself to understand what's happening i find like what it means per se for my character what you know what is my character the objective or things like that and then i just allow what i've built and what i've worn and what i live to just respond to the circumstance because that's how we live life like you are you Right. You don't you don't ever think about how you're going to be when a person says this. No, life is about reacting. Everything mm -hmm. that happens in the course of our day is reacting. So everything that I said, this whole conversation is a reaction to things that has happened two, three weeks ago when you reached out about this interview, you know, right. setting it up, scheduling it, the Zoom call, uh, creating a flyer. All of that is a reaction to that initial conversation right and what caused that initial conversation it is a reaction to the success that you've had with other interviews it's a reaction to the success for the whole platform so life is all about reacting so once yeah. you know who you are you just allow yourself to react for sure uh, okay okay reaction i like that um are there any demons or challenges that you face in this industry um, and that you've beaten. Crack cocaine. Nah, nice <laughs> um, <laughs> a lot of people meet me and they'd be like, I'm surprised you're not a, a crackhead by now. You know, I have drugs. I'm like, man, act not Just all focus. actors like drugs. Like, <laughs> I right, ain't never exactly. done that stuff in my life. Um, when you say demons, what do you mean? You mean like vices for myself personally? It, um, it could be that or other from other people. Because, you know, as we get to a platform and we start climbing, there's a lot of people that start coming, trying to take us off of our, you know, focus, trying to get mm -hmm. us off track, distractions, all that stuff. Did you find yourself running into any of that um, since you've been here? And if so, what were you, what did you do to get out of that situation or move forward? Oh, uh, not really, man. You know, like, I, I definitely people try to introduce you to things that's that's life you know right. but when you're not interested you don't even pay attention to that like people can only tempt you with things that are tempting to you mm -hmm. if something's not tempting to you they, they can't tempt you with it you know what i'm right. saying like right. if, if a person is a vegan no matter how long you sit there with a cheeseburger in front of them they're not going to be inclined to take a bite like they're right. vegan that's what they are that is who they are so right. I feel like a lot of people get lost in the industry because they don't know themselves. They mm -hmm. haven't connected yet to who they are and they're still searching for that. So when you're searching, you try things and when you start trying things, certain things you're going to like, like certain things may feel dope, right? Certain people love the feeling that things give them, whether it's drugs, whether it's women, whether it's traveling, whether it's alcohol, whatever the case is. Right. And I, for me, I'm not searching for anything. Like I know exactly who I am. My my parents made sure that, you know, uh, so I have that. people presented certain things to me? Heck yeah, but has it tempted me? Nah, I'd be like, my man, if you don't get that out of here. Like I've had dudes, yo, I've been places where, I, I was in Costa Rica with my boy Alex and um, we was at this dude's house that was like one of, and, <laughs> and I was telling this story to Kevin Bacon on set and I, I think he was like, what the heck? But um, we were at this dude's house that was responsible for bringing Mercedes Benz Fashion Week to Costa Rica. So we sitting there and we chilling in crazy mansion that's like overlooking the ocean up on some hill in the forest of Costa Rica, dog. And um, 
we laid back, two black dudes, you know, they, <laughs> we sit here, we chill it. And I'm saying to my man, I'm like, yo, because it took us like two and a half hours to get there. I'm like, yo, this is a long drive. Like, right. what if my man trying something? He was like, dog, we black. What he going to do? And I'm like, right, right. So we, we say they're ignorant, right? We sit in there, we chilling. My man comes, puts a duffel bag on the table, plop, just looks at us. So I'm like, yo, I told you. <laughs> like, he opens the bag. He's like, I want to show you something. So I'm like, oh man. Son pulls out a whole brick of Coke. Oh, right wow. On. Pulls out this big hunting knife. Yo, the knife is like this big. Cuts the bag open. He's like, you like cocaine? I'm like, nah. He's like, no, I got cocaine on my brain. It takes the knife and does a big line off the knife. He's like, no. So I'm like, yo, yo, no. I'm looking at my man. I'm like, yo, we're going to have to snuff son and throw him off his own balcony. Like, it's about to go down. Like, we're going to have to do this, dude. And uh, my man is like, he's like, yo, chill, relax. Like, we're we're in Hollywood, you know. Right. Like, you're an actor. You have seen this before. Just chill. Right. So he's like, no, nah, we good. We'll just take the beer, All right? So the dude gives us the beer. He's sitting there doing whatever, and I'm I'm sitting there like, bro, I need to get up out of here because we're two and a half hours away. Fam got this knife, and I'm not feeling comfortable right now. Right. And um, my my boy was chill. And so he realized that we were two and a half hours from the hotel. We just drove along gravel and dirt roads up this mountain with no kind of guard on the side, narrow road. And he the only driver. Mm, <laughs> the, yeah. the dude that's high on coke is the only driver. You know, so uh, I said my prayer right away. I'm like, I'm not staying at his crib. So he's going to have to drive us back. So let me say a prayer. And fortunately, of course, <laughs> we made it back safe. Right. No, um, yeah. But yeah, I done, I done been in some crazy situations, you know, but that's never like. Yeah, I mean, out here, especially, but it's that's not like a, a scene out of a movie, man. That's <laughs> Yo, it, it was. I thought I thought I was sitting with like Tony Montana. I thought he was. Right. Right. <laughs> Big Lebowski. That was just crazy. Um, but I did like, you know, what you said was like, you know, a lot of people, they don't know themselves and that's why they fall into um, a lot of these things. And, you know, I've asked, I asked a lot of my guests that same question. It's always interesting to hear the, the response, um, you know, based upon people's experiences, how long they've been in the industry, you know, that type of thing. Um, but I want to get into uh, closing up here in the interview. I want to get into our fast questions. Cool. So. I ask you a question, you give me the first response that comes to mind, okay? Okay. All right, here we go. What is your favorite word? Bruh. <laughs> All right, uh, what's your least favorite word? Uh, that, I don't, that's, yeah, I pulled a blank, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't like, okay, no. <laughs> No, I don't like no. I do not like oh, the word no. no. Okay. no yeah, okay. I don't like the word no. Okay. Uh, what's something that turns you on? Hmm. Dang, that's tough. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know you uh, in, my, in, in, in my day, you know what I'm saying? You know, it, it's a name that's like, you know, I like to look at the <laughs> Now, uh, what turns me on? That's. It, I, I would say smart conversation. Mm. A lot of chicks don't know how to have a conversation. Okay. So when I'm with a chick that just knows how to like hold a meaningful conversation that has right. substance, I like that. All right. What's something that turns you off? Bad hygiene. Mm. Bad yeah. hygiene, bad weaves, and fake eyelashes. <laughs> <laughs> Very specific on that one. Yeah, right, like you know, can't smell like burnt toast. That's not a good look. <laughs> and if I could feel the wind when you batting your eyes at me, that's that's no good. Oh, that's no, no good no, either. No, yeah. yeah, if I need AC, we got that. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> What's the sound or noise that you love? 
sound and noise that I love, rain. Mm. Rain. How about how about one that you hate? Oh, like bug squishing? Oh yeah. Yeah, oh, no, I'm not <laughs> like that crunch. Yeah, I can't stand that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's nasty. Um, do you have a favorite cuss word? Nah. Damn. Damn. Okay. Yeah. Damn, um, bro. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. What profession other than your own would you participate in? What, what? What profession other than your own would you participate in? Oh, teaching. Okay. Teaching what, or cooking. Teaching or cooking. What's yeah. a profession that you would not participate in? Uh, Hmm. Law enforcement. Law enforcement. Okay. Yeah. Hey. They put the they they regardless of the backlash and all of that, they put themselves on the line, dog. I'm sorry. Yeah. You oh, telling yeah. me there's trouble and you calling me? Right. <laughs> you, you, they, they, they dispatch says shots fired and you telling me to go there? <laughs> nah. nah. I'm not signing up for that. Well, I mean, you got you to gotta start somewhere. You want to be a Marvel, man. You got to get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nah, bro. If my own mama called me like, they shooting outside, I'd be like, so why you call me? <laughs> what, you, what you want me to do? I'm not I about to run over there and they shooting. Duck. <laughs> That's all I can tell you, ma. It's duck. <laughs> right. <laughs> Don't you stop going to your friend house that live in the hood. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, Beyonce or Riri? Riri. Mm, okay, okay. Yeah. And last but not least, heaven exists. You get up to God. Mm -hmm. What would you like to him say to you? I would like for him to call me a friend because I, I, I live my life with him in mind and I made my decisions based on what I feel would be acceptable to him. Nice. Hello, friend. I, I love it. I love it. Uh, go ahead and tell everyone where to find you and to keep up with you. Y'all can find me on Instagram at Mark John J. That's Mark with a C. Um, my Facebook like page is the same and so is my Twitter, even though I don't really be on Twitter. But that's where y'all can find me. All right, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mark John Jeffries. It's been great yes, having you on the show. Um, thank you, thank you. Shout out to my course. son, Liam. Of Liam course. Liam John Jeffries. That's the second coming. That's the second coming. Let's go. Yeah, that's the second coming. <laughs> thank you so for uh, giving me your time. I appreciate talking to you. And just I wish you the best. God bless you. And I'm going to look forward to Phil's High and everything else that comes up with you. And we'll appreciate take care of that. And everybody, you can find me at I am Danny Royce. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week for another episode of Inside the Black Actors Studio. Bye, guys.